Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna go over some Lewis structure um, problems from your worksheet. So we're gonna go over just simple Lewis structures. We're gonna go over incomplete. Um, we'll do some expanded ones, and then we'll jump into multiple and polyatomic. So hopefully this kind of helps out. I know we've been seeing a little bit of confusion with it, so we're just gonna go through and show you how to do some of these. One thing you will need to have with you is a periodic table, because we're gonna have to find valence electrons. So we're gonna start off with just simple Lewis structures. So I'm gonna zoom in here and start with CH4. Okay, so using your periodic table, we need to find the number of valence electrons um, for each of these atoms and then add them all up. So if you look up carbon, so carbon, let me switch my pin real quick. Carbon, if you look at the top of the group, you see 4A on your periodic table. That's how many valence electrons there are. So there's four valence electrons in one carbon, and there's only one of them, so four times one means there's four electrons for carbon. Hydrogen, if you look up at the top of its group, it has a group 1A, so it means it has one valence electron, but there's four of them. So one times four gives me four electrons. Okay, so now that I have my valence electrons, I'm gonna add those all up, and I get eight total electrons. Okay, so I figured out how many electrons I have, and then the next step we need to do is turn that into pairs. So you're gonna take your total and divide it by two. So this will give me four pairs to use. Okay, so this should be your, th these two steps should be done every single time. Okay, so that way you know what to work with. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to decide which one's gonna be our central atom and which one's gonna be our terminal atoms. So this should be a hint is if I only have one carbon, that is definitely gonna be my central atom because since there's only one of them, it's going to share bonds with all four hydrogens. Okay, so that's what I did. I just bonded four hydrogens to carbon. I had four pairs to use and I just used four pairs. So each one of those lines counts as a pair of electrons. So it's almost like these are two little dots. Okay, one coming from a hydrogen and one coming from a carbon. Okay, so each line counts as a pair. So I used four pairs. So that means I have zero left, so that means this one is done. Um, just a couple things is one thing you need to know that is hydrogen will never be a central atom. Okay, so hydrogen can only hold one bond or pair. Okay, hydrogen can only hold one bond or pair. So once it has that line, okay, that pair, that's it. If I had any leftover pairs, it could not go around hydrogen like this. Okay, hydrogen can only hold that one line. So this would be wrong, this would be wrong, and this would be wrong. Okay, so it can only hold one pair, so therefore it cannot be a central atom. Okay, so that one is complete, so let's move on to the next one. You have nitrogen, has five valence electrons. There's only one of them, so that's gonna to be a total of five. Hydrogen has one, and there's three of them. So that means there's three total electrons for hydrogen. So five plus three gives me eight electrons. So there's my total. So I'm gonna take that total and divide it by two. So eight divided by two gives me four pairs. So I have four pairs of electrons to use. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bond nitrogen with three hydrogens. Okay, so I used up three. So I have one pair left. Okay, so we just talked about is, you normally start with terminals first. Okay, so if we have any leftover pairs um, after our bonding, you start with your terminals and then you go back to the central. Okay, but since I cannot put anything more on those hydrogens, that last pair is gonna have to go back on nitrogen. Okay, so I've got one, so here's one pair right here, here's two pair right here, here's three, and then here's four. So I've used up my four, so I'm down to zero, that means we are done. Okay, next one, H2O. So hydrogen has one valence electron, but there's two of them, so that means there's two total electrons for hydrogen. Oxygen has six, and there's only one of them, so that means there's six electrons for oxygen. 
So six plus two gives me eight. I'm gonna take that total, divide by two, so eight divided by two, and that gives me four pairs to work with. Okay, step one is I need to figure out which one's gonna be our central atom, which one's gonna be our terminal. So again, we said hydrogen can never be a central, so that means oxygen has to be my central. So I'm just gonna bond two hydrogens with oxygen. Okay, so that was my first two step, and I just used up two pairs right there, so four minus two, that means I have two left. And since I cannot put any more on those hydrogens, those two bonds have to go back on oxygen. So I just used up two. Now I'm down to zero. So that would be my complete Lewis structure there. SIF4. Okay, so you're going to look up silicon on your periodic table. So silicon, if you look up at the top, has a group number of 4A. So that means there's four valence electrons for silicon. Fluorine, if you look up that, that's in group 7A. And I've got four of them, so 7 times 4 gives me 28 electrons. So 28 plus 4 is going to give me 32 electrons. I'm going to take that 32, divide by 2, and I get 16 pairs. Okay, so one thing is just make sure to check your math. Um, sometimes this is where we can get some mathematical mistakes. So if something doesn't pan out, just check your numbers again and see if you made a mistake there. Okay, so if I only have one silicone and I have four fluorines, that means silicone has to be my centerpiece. And I'm going to attach four fluorines. Okay, so I just used up four pairs, so minus four, that means I have 12 left. Okay, so I'm going to start on my terminal atoms. So each one of these terminal atoms can hold three more pairs. So remember, the whole goal is to achieve an octet. So eight electrons or four pairs. Each one of these fluorines can hold four pairs, and that is, that's including the bonding pair between it and silicone. So that line counts as one, so meaning these fluorines can hold three more pairs besides that line. So that one's going to hold three. This one's going to hold three. This one's going to hold three. And this one will get the other three. So I just used up 12 pairs right there. So 12 minus 12, that means I have zero pairs left. And now I am complete. So silicone has its four pairs, so it's happy. Each fluorine has its four pairs, so it's happy. So we are done. Okay, last one on here, we have nitrogen. It has five valence electrons, and there's only one of them, so it's five. Chlorine has seven valence electrons, but there's three of them, so that's 21. Add that up, and you get 26 electrons. 26 divided by 2, and that gives me 13 pairs. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply bond nitrogen with chlorine. I just used up 3, so that I'm going to subtract 3. That means I have 10 left. So I'm going to start on my terminals. Okay, we always start on our terminals before we go back to the central. So this one's going to hold 3 more. This one's going to hold 3 more. This one's going to hold three more. And we just used up nine. So I have one left. So those chlorines are full. So the only option is to go back to my central atom. So that means this nitrogen is going to take that extra pair. So I just used up one. So now I'm at zero. So that means I am done. Okay, so now let's move on to incomplete octets. Okay, so real quick, I'm going to write this out is normally, so starting at carbon, or starting with carbon, okay, central atom must have at least four pairs. Oops, let me fix that. So starting with carbon, the central atom must have at least four pairs. Otherwise, it's not going to have the octet and it's not going to be happy. Okay, so like when we go back to like H2O, oxygen is past carbon. Okay, oxygen is number eight. Okay, so it needs to have four pairs. So it's got one, two, three, and four. Okay, so it's happy. So it's achieved that octet. Okay, and here, silicone needs four pairs. So it's got the 
one, two, three, four. So that means it's good. Okay, so starting with carbon, your central atom better have at least four pairs to achieve that octet. Okay, we, we'll go back, uh, we'll go over how, when it has more here in a second. But for now, we have incomplete octets. You've got two exceptions to that rule. Okay, so starting with carbon, it had to have at least four. Beryllium, okay, which is BE, so beryllium, is fine with two bonds. Okay, and then you have boron here, is fine with three bonds. Okay, so we're gonna do them, and so we're gonna see, we're gonna do the exact same thing we've been doing. So if you look up beryllium on the periodic table, it has two valence electrons, there's only one of them, so there's only two for beryllium. Fluorine has seven apiece, but there's two of them, so seven times two gives me 14. 14 plus two gives me 16 total electrons. I'm gonna take that 16, divide by two, that means I have eight pairs to work with. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply bond beryllium with two fluorines. Okay, so I just used up two, so that means I have six left. So if I've got, I'm gonna start on my terminals, so that means this fluorine can hold three more. And then this fluorine can hold three more. Okay, so I just used up my six remaining. So that means I am done. So beryllium does not need that octet. It's done. So it's good with two bonds. So that would be done. Over here, we have boron. Has three valence electrons. There's only one of them. Chlorine has seven, and there's three of them. So seven times three gives me 21 electrons. So add that up. You get 24 electrons. I'm going to take that 24, divide by 2, and I get 12 pairs. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take boron and put it in the center. And I'm just going to bond three chlorines. So I just used up three. That means I have nine left to use. So I know these chlorines can each hold three apiece. Okay, so I had nine left, I just used nine, so that means this one is complete. So you just got to make sure, starting with carbon, it has to have at least four. Boron is fine with three bonds, and beryllium is fine with two. Okay, so now let's talk about expanded octets, so when we have more than four bonds. So we're gonna do the exact same rules, so sulfur, if you look up in the periodic table, has six valence electrons. There's only one of them, so there's only six. Fluorine has seven, but there's six of them, so seven times six is 42. Add that up, and you get 48 electrons. You're going to take that 48, divide it by two, and that gives me 24 pairs to use. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is, if I only have one sulfur, sulfur has to be my central atom since I have six fluorines, so sulfur is going to be in the middle. I'm going to attach six fluorines. Okay, so I've attached my six fluorines. So I've used up six. That means I have 18 left. And each of these fluorines can hold three apiece. So I'm going to put three pairs of electrons on each one. Now bear with me as I'm doing all these dots. There's quite a few dots. Okay, so I used three apiece. I had six, chlor six fluorines, so six times three is 18. So I just used up those 18, so I'm at zero. So that means I am done. So that one is complete. So sulfur, it has at least um, four pair, so it's good. Okay, so expanded octets, these typically happen. So starting with the third period. Okay, so remember period is the going is the horizontal rows on the periodic table. So starting on the third period, that central atom can hold more 
than four bonds. Okay, so if you wanna, if you wanna write this down, you can write this down. So carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, okay? And fluorine is never going to be a central atom, okay? Because it's two electronegative. Okay, so those three need to have four pairs and four pairs only. Okay, anything in the third period, so starting with third period, you can have more than four pairs. So we had beryllium, it was fine with two. Boron was fine with three. Carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen are going to have four pairs. And then anything starting on the third period can have more than four. It's fine if it has four, but it can have more than four. Okay, so we have phosphorus. Let's do our next one. So phosphorus, if we look that up, it has five valence electrons. There's only one of them, so that's five total. Chlorine has seven valence electrons, and there's five of them, so seven times five gives me 35 electrons. Add that up, and you get 40 electrons. Divide that by two. That means we have 20 pairs to work with. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take fluorine, I'm sorry, take phosphorus and just bond five chlorines. Okay, so I just used up five, so that means we got 15 left. Each one of these holds three, so I'm gonna put three pairs on each one. Okay, so I just used up 15, so that means I'm at zero. So that means this one is complete. Okay, so we're gonna jump over to some that are gonna have some leftover. So I'm just gonna jump over here to the xenon F4. So xenon, if you look up in your periodic table, is in group 8A. So that means it has eight electrons. Fluorine is in group 7A, so it's got seven. So seven times four gives me 28. I'm gonna add 28 and eight, and I get 36 total electrons. So 36 divided by two gives me 18 pairs. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that xenon, and I'm just gonna bond it with four fluorines. Okay, so I just used up four, so that means I have 14 left. I know each of these fluorines can hold three apiece. So I'm gonna put three pairs around each one. Okay, so I just used up 12. So that means I've got two left. So any leftover pairs, if your terminal atoms are full, any leftover pairs are gonna go back on that central atom. So xenon is fine with holding on to those six pairs. Okay, so I've used up my two, so that means I'm at zero, so that means we are done. Okay, so again, if you have any leftovers, just put them back on the central atom. Okay, so now let's go down to, I'm gonna skip over polyatomics here, and I'm just gonna jump into multiple, multiple bonds before we come back. Okay, so I have H2CO. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. So hydrogen has, two, has one valence electron, but there's two of them. So there's two electrons for hydrogen. Carbon has four valence electrons. There's only one of them, so that's four. Oxygen has six valence electrons. There's only one of them, so that's six. So six plus four plus two gives me 12 total electrons. So 12 divided by two, that gives me six pairs. Okay, so same thing. So nothing different there. So now we need to decide who is gonna be in the central. So who is gonna be my central atom? Well, we know hydrogen can never be a central atom because it can only hold one bond. Now we've got the option of carbon or oxygen. Okay, so the atom that with the is the least electro, electro sorry, the atom that is the least electronegative will be the center. Okay, so central atom is least electronegative. Okay, so if you look on the periodic table, electronegativity increases as you go across a group. Okay, as you go across a period, sorry. 
So as we go to the right in the same period, electronegativity, electronegativity will increase. So if you look at your periodic table, carbon is number six, oxygen is number eight. So that means oxygen is going to be more electronegative, meaning it wants to steal electrons. So that's the last thing we want is the one who wants the electrons the most to be in the center, okay? Because it's going to create uneven bonds, okay? So the atom that is the least electronegative will be the central atom. So that means carbon is going to be our le least electronegative. So that means carbon is going to be our centerpiece. And we're going to just bond two hydrogens and then one oxygen. Okay, so that was my first step is right there. So I just used up three. So that means I have three left. Okay, so remember we always start with our terminal atoms. So I know hydrogen can't hold anymore, so I'm not going to put any, any of the three there. Okay, so that means oxygen has got to take these three. Okay, so I've used up my three, so I'm at zero now. But I'm looking at carbon right now, and it only has three bonds. Okay, it only has three pairs of electrons. So it only has one, two, and three. And it needs four. Okay, so I'm going to erase these numbers real quick. What it can do is it needs to borrow, or we can move one of these electron pairs from oxygen over here to help out that carbon to achieve its octet. Okay, so I'm going to take that pair and I'm going to bring it over here. And when I do, it becomes a double bond. Okay, so it no longer is a lone pair where it's two dots. It becomes a bonded pair, which is a line. Okay, so a, one of these lines is a bonded pair, meaning it is shared between it and another atom. Okay, these little two dots here, these are lone pairs that are off on their own that are attached to oxygen and they're not being used by anyone else. So in this case, oxygen brings one of those lone pairs over to make a double bond with carbon. So now carbon has its four, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete those two dots. Okay, so now carbon has its four bonds. It has one, two, three, and four. Oxygen has one pair, so let me delete this real quick. Oxygen has one pair, two pair, three pair, four pair, so it is happy as well. Okay, so double bonds, triple bonds, these happen to make sure we achieve an octet. So that means that is my complete answer right there. So let's do the next one, HCN. So we have H, so hydrogen has one valence electron, carbon has four valence electrons, and nitrogen has five valence electrons. So five plus four plus one gives me 10 electrons. 10 divided by two gives me five pairs. Okay, so I need to see which one's gonna be my central piece. So we know hydrogen is not gonna be my central piece. Now it comes down to carbon and nitrogen. So if you look on your periodic table, nitrogen is further to the right. Okay, so further towards that top right corner, meaning it is more electronegative. So that means carbon is my least electronegative. So it means carbon is going to be my central piece. So I'm just going to start off just by bonding hydrogen and carbon and nitrogen. So I just used up two, so that means I have three pairs left to use. So I'm going to put them around this nitrogen, because remember, you always have to start with your terminals. And then you go back to your central atom. Okay, so, because I couldn't put any on that hydrogen, so they had to go on the nitrogen. So now I need to look, is everyone happy? Well, nitrogen has its four pairs, so it's happy, but carbon is not. It only has two, but it needs two more to reach that four. So since nitrogen has all these extra bonds here, these extra pairs, we're going to shift two of those over where they become a triple bond with this carbon. So these dots go away, and they are shared between the carbon and nitrogen now. So now carbon has... One, two, three, four bonds. Nitrogen has one, two, three, four, I'm sorry, pairs. Nitrogen has one, two, three, four pairs. Hydrogen is good with its one pair, so that means this is done. Okay, so those double and triple bonds are needed to help each other out, to help out that central atom. So let's do one more of these. So carbon has four valence electrons. Oxygen has six. Six plus four gives me 10 electrons. Okay, so I'm going to take that 10 divided by 2, so 10 divided by 2. 
and I have five pairs. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach carbon with oxygen. Okay, I just used up one, so that means I have four pairs left. Okay, so central is carbon is still my central atom. So that means I'm gonna put three pairs around this oxygen. And I still have one left over, so I'm gonna put it back on this central atom on carbon. So now I gotta look. Is carbon happy? Okay, so right now it has two valence electrons. Okay, but it is not happy. So I'm sorry, two pairs. So it needs four. Okay, so since oxygen has these three, we're gonna move them over here. So this becomes a triple bond. These pairs have been shifted over, so we don't need them there anymore. So now carbon has its four pairs, oxygen has its four pairs. And so this one should be complete. Okay, so the next video, I'm going to go over polyatomics in the next video since this takes a little more. So hopefully this kind of helped out.